I'm your host, Sean McKenzie, and thank you for joining me for this week's video on data transformation and data analysis. This week we're going to school because there are some things you should know before you start doing some serious queries. What are we talking about? Relationships. Not the kind that get many of us into trouble, but relationships between tables. And you've got to know what those relationships are in a relational database management system. What's that, you ask? RDBMS. And if you're going to get serious about data analytics and transformation skills, you got to learn about relationships between tables. Okay, so today we're talking about relationships in databases and how to understand how the relationships affect your queries. So we're understanding one-to-one, -one, one to many and many-to-many -many relationships in databases. Uh, in, in our basics, uh, we, we know that each table holds information about one thing like a customer or a product. And when we make an output view of that data, we're often joining the data together and we're creating a product, uh, which is the output from, you know, two or more tables. And each table will have some relationship with other tables. Um, and sometimes it's not obvious what that relationship is. Um, each table will often have some relationship with other tables. And we can often see that from looking at the database design or doing some detective work of our own. So the relationships are one-to-one, -one, one to many and many to many. In a one-to-one -one relationship, there's only one record in each table that uh, can match on an ID or or set of IDs if it's a composite key. Um, you can join them together to get one single row uh, with all the fields uh, in both tables in one row. And you won't have any duplicates uh, because there is a one-to-one -one relationship between the two. For example, if we have a person and we have a passport, um, usually there's only one person associated with one current passport. And so that would be a one-to-one -one, uh, relationship uh, between tables in a database. So again, this one person uh, would have one passport and we can join them together, join those two tables together in order to get the information about the person and the passport. In a one-to-many relationship, uh, there's one record in a table that can have many records in another table associated with that ID. So, uh, for example, one customer can have many orders. Uh, each of those orders can have many items on it. Um, and so we can view that in this way. So one customer can have many orders. And like we saw before, we would join that in a relationship. Uh, but what we would do is, in this case, uh, we're going to create what's called a crow's foot. Um, and that's going to identify that one customer can have many orders. And so uh, in this simple example, um, we'll join those using a simple crow's foot. And in the same manner, uh, the order items, uh, one order can have many items on it, just like your shopping list. And we would do the same thing uh, by adding a crow's foot um, in that sense. And so that's how one-to-many relationships work. We know that one customer can have many orders and one order can have many items. And by joining those together in one query, we could see all of the order items with the order and customer information on each row. So in this case, one record in a table can have a relationship with many records in another table. And likewise, one record in the other table can have a relationship with many records in this table. And this is usually joined by what we call a junction table, or it's facilitated by a junction table. So in our orders case, uh, we could have a table with orders in it, and we could have a table with the items in it, just like all the items in a grocery store. And uh, what we would have in between for a junction table would be our order items table. And so uh, we, we would join that one to many uh, from order to order items. And we would also join it the other way, one to many from items to order items. And when we create a query 
uh, using, um, using these uh, joins, then we will get a full list of all of the order items with the details of the order and the details of the items on each, on each row. Implicit versus explicit relationships. And what we're going to talk about here is uh, uh, the two different ways that you can see relationships in a database. When you're retrieving data for data analytics, you're going to see both. Um, and you need to remember if, it's a, if it is explicit, make sure that the default join is what you want. Uh, and if it is implicit, you're going to qualify the relationship and then join it yourself. So in our explicit relationship, it's a relationship where the database design already has uh, a defined relationship between the tables. And so when we pull our customers and orders table from our Northwind database onto a query, um, it automatically creates this, this join here. And that might be great for, for what we're doing, but we might decide for a different query that that is not the join that we want. And so uh, we need to make sure that we cover that. In an implicit relationship, we might pull our, order, our customers and orders uh, tables onto our query and there's no join. So what we would do in this case is we would drag the ID column from the customers onto the customer ID in the orders and that would create our join, our inner join in this case that we wanted to see. But we needed to do that ourselves because the relationship was implicit and was not defined in the database in this case. So the duplicate fit pitfall is something that we should talk about because when you're creating queries you're gonna you're gonna get all excited and you're gonna join all kinds of tables into your queries and what you need to understand is that you need to always identify which table is at the most granular level of your of your query your current sort of scope and duplicates uh, can be created if you add joins that are not in the current scope. And so you really need to watch out for that. If you see this, you need to break up your query into smaller queries and then join those. Or if you're in other environments like uh, SQL Server or, or other databases, you might use common table expressions or things like that in order to uh, create, uh, create a, a, a view that will join nicely into your, into your query. So generally speaking, if you want to, to keep things simple, uh, you'll keep the one-to-many flowing towards the most granular table. So in our orders exa uh, example, uh, we might have orders and items. And as we talked about before, uh, we will join those using one-to-many each way. And that will create a distinct list of our order items with the uh, with the order information and the item information on it. Um, however, if we wanted to show include uh, something else in this case, like item locations, because we wanted to show you know where the item is is stored, um, and generally say it was uh, warehouse A has our item on it and warehouse B might also have the item on it. What that's going to do is if we join it the wrong way and add that onto the end of our query, it's going to create duplicate uh, order item rows for every uh, item location. And so typically what we want to do is we'll package up the or create one query or view or common table expression with the order items and order items in it and we'll create that into in one query and then we'll take the items, the item locations and just um, and narrow down to a single row for each of those and then join that back in. Okay, so we're gonna go ahead and go back to our Northwind Analytics database in order to uh, show this example of the duplicate problem. And uh, we'll start a new query and we can close that pop-up and just drag the tables that we want directly onto our query. So we'll take uh, some customers, uh, we'll take the orders, and uh, we'll take uh, some order details because we want to know things like quantity and price. 
and then we'll take the products table as well because that will give us a nice description of the product uh, in our query. So this database has some explicit um, constraints on the tables and so it automatically joins when we drag our, our tables onto our query but what we'll do is uh, we're going to join it ourselves and do some inner joins because that's what we wanted to see today. So we'll join the customers onto the orders, we'll join the orders onto the order details, and then we'll join the products onto the order details. And as we spoke about earlier, um, in this query, uh, we're identifying our most granular table, which is the order details. And so we have our one-to-many relationships flowing towards the order details. So we'll go ahead and we'll take some fields and we will uh, add those to our query so we have some output. We'll grab a product name and throw that in there as well so we have a nice description. And when we look at the output of this query we can see we've got everything in there so uh, we'll put a criteria on and we'll, we'll uh, put company D in our criteria and then we can run that query and we can see that we've got just the information, just the order details for company D with the uh, price and quantity. And so we can see our customer flows to the orders, uh, flows to the order details in the middle, and then the products flows into the order details as well. And so if we got curious and we wanted to throw on something like inventory transactions, even though it doesn't really make sense in this case, but um, inventory transactions uh, is a, on the many side and one to many on the products. Um, and we decided to join the products to our inventory transactions um, and we got an output that way, then the one to many um, relationship is flowing away from our order details uh, on the other side of the products. And so that's going to create a situation where we have duplicate records. So we have duplicate order uh, quantity and price on the, on the uh, order details table and we have some information from, from the uh, transaction table but we're not really sure um, how that would go together and if we summed up the uh, quantity times price from the order details it would actually be wrong. Um, so we want to go ahead and take uh, the transactions out and we'll join that in another way. Thank you for joining me in this week's episode on data transformation and data analytics and I hope that you enjoyed it. Uh, if you liked what you saw please uh, hit the like button and subscribe button below and when you see the bell hit the bell to be notified of any upcoming videos. So keep practicing your skills and keep trying out some, some new things on your Northwind Analytics database and we will catch you next time.